Good day, everyone, and welcome once again to TTR, the UK session for the 26th of February. Thanks for joining us. Um, Brexit. Sick of the word, but it's all over the place again today. And I guess we'll have to talk about it because it is the elephant in the room. But let's have a look and see what else is about um, before we get into that um, and before Ash joins us. I'm sure he's all over uh, everything Brexit. What have we got uh, today being Tuesday, the Feb 26th? We've got uh, in about two and a half hours from now, inflation report hearings <clears throat> on the pound. We've got um, Jerome Powell talking at 2.45 p.m. London time. And we've got CB Consumer Confidence coming out of that's the control board consumer confidence coming out of the states as well powers testifying to the senate banking committee today okay so um inflation report hearings what's that likely to tell us Testifying inflation, the economic outlook before Parliament's pressure committee the hearings for a few hours and length can create market volatility for the duration. Especially noted are the direct comments made about currency markets. Okay. Okay. Righto. So maybe a little bit of a, a bumpy road for the pound in a couple of hours. I had a bumpy road on the pound yesterday and couldn't uh, couldn't kick a goal on it, unfortunately. And got a little bit of a clip under the ear for that uh, by myself, of course. And uh, we'll talk about that uh, a little bit later. I was trading, trying to trade pound yen as a little bit of reversal back to the pivots didn't work and uh, gave a little bit back to the brokers. Not happy about that. Never happy to pay them, but unfortunately it is a cost of doing business with them when you get it wrong and uh, and yesterday I got it wrong on that um, 30 minute trade that I uh, that I executed I think my timing was out uh, and if my timing wasn't out I was completely wrong <laughs> one or the other isn't it um, that's pretty much it for the day we've got um, three red flags and uh, the first of them as I say coming up in a little under two and a half hours from now Let's take a look at, at what's going on in terms of the trades that we've A, taken or are in. Still in Euro Pound, if you're following this one with me, uh, I have taken the second profit. So I've banked again at this white line, as I said I would. And I've moved my stock to entry now. So this is now going to be either a good trade or a very good trade, depending on what happens next. Um, the pound has apparently rallied. Uh, Ash was expecting this actually when uh, when the news came through. Was it overnight yesterday? I'm totally confused by all the news that comes out with Brexit. But I did see this morning uh, that Theresa May has indicated that she may well be in favour of extending the, the Brexit deadline. Um there's all sorts of news around this and really there's a whole lot of speculation as well but these are the headlines out of it um oh i didn't read this one um i'll have to have a look at that again um but uh yes this was the one that came out this morning early well this morning this morning australia time um, and the pound hasn't, uh, hasn't been hurt by that in any way, shape or form. In fact, it looks to be doing a whole lot better. Euro pound uh, still going down. That's all good, of course. Uh, it makes it a little bit tough to, uh, to find these reversals that I'm often looking for, most of the time looking for. And when you get news coming out daily on the pound, it probably gives you a good, um, a good idea that it ain't a good idea to be trading on small time frames <clears throat> uh, because you never know when something's going to happen. This was just seemed to be timed completely in uh, accordance with the close of the US session 
I think that was announced um, just a few moments after the US session closed, which was very, very interesting. Um, there was a little bit of a gap in the market as a result. Sorry, when I say what I'm looking at, probably a good idea for you to have a look at it as well. This is what I was talking about on the Forex Factory this morning. This came up. And uh, as I say, the market has reacted in kind to that, given a little bit of a boost to the pound. So it would appear. I'll, uh, I'll get Ash's thoughts on that very, very shortly as well. And uh, they're speculating as to what might happen with, uh, with Jerome Powell's speech today or testimony today to the Senate committee. So there's a bit going on, as always, and not least of which is the bloody big elephant in the room, as I said. Uh, you, you just can't ignore it because it keeps giving us, I, I guess, different moves in the market day in, day out, and today is no different. And we see, of course, that um, uh, there's a bit more news to this as well. The uh, plan to postpone Brexit. I think Labor's come out and said that uh, they have also made the decision and uh, goodness gracious me, I'm going to ask Ash a question when he's given us um, his rundown of events overnight. Um, but apparently they're going to meet on this particular subject this evening in Parliament. And uh, apparently Theresa May is going to suggest that we will have a postponement. Ash, any more on that? How are you doing? Uh, yes, very good, mate. Yes. Um, yeah, there's, there's quite a lot of uh, stuff with Brexit going on. Um, what's that? Something. What's that Trump headline? Yeah, I hadn't seen it. It's just popped up. Because the, the, the FTSE 100 is uh, has had a real bit bit of well, it's had a it's had a bit of a dive. Is it okay? Yeah, it's down about uh, fifty pips, which is fairly significant. Um, okay, he's saying he struck a deal with China, which has agreed. What? Under which it has agreed to manipulate this currency. <laughs> I got a funny feeling that's wrong. Yeah, that doesn't sound right, does it? No. Who, who no. um, whose who story is this? Uh, this is out of where? What person is this? Sydney Morning Herald, which is normally a fairly reasonable uh, journal, but I think they've okay. got that one completely wrong. I, I think they <laughs> they mean quite the reverse of that. Trump okay. announced the deal on Friday, along with the extension to uh, this Friday's deadline for trade negotiations that would otherwise trigger the increased tariffs on the blah, 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 blah. We know that. Well, the administration provided no detail on, no detail on the currency agreement. Treasury Secretary Munchen described it as one of the strongest agreements ever on currency. Okay. Um, but if they're, if they're normally, if they're normally a reliable source... I don't understand why the markets have weakened off the back of that. Well, a decade ago, China did deliberately depress its exchange rate as part of its then mercantilist policies. In recent years, it has pursued a stable and stronger rem, I can't even pronounce that, renminbi, don't know what it means, as its economic policies have swung away from export-led growth to consumption and cautious opening up of its economy to external capital. To the extent it has intervened in currency markets, it has been to prop up the renminbi. I'm going to have to look that word up. To devalue... Oh, that's a currency, is it? Yes, I think it is, yeah. Where? Um, in recent years, it has pursued a stable and stronger renminbi. Never heard of the renminbi. There you go. Strange. Very strange. Well, the markets have, have weakened overnight. Um, the predecessor of the one, perhaps. I don't know. It could be. Yeah, maybe. Maybe this is this is just a little before our time. I, I have heard that term before, and I, and I have heard the term uh, Rimnimbi, but okay. I'm not sure why. I'll I'll do a quick search on it. Uh, Uh, Yuan Rimin is the official yeah, currency, currency of the People's Republic of China. The, the Huan. There you oh, go, here you go. So, what's that? Sorry. In effect, even as the trends within the two economies are diverging, China has agreed to peg its currency to the greenback and essentially import US monetary policy. Wow. 
Wow. So the, the yuan is the basic unit of the renminbi, but it's also used to refer to the Chinese currency generally. Okay, there you go. Especially in the, in the international context where the Chinese yuan is wisely used to refer to the renminbi. Oh, okay. So the same thing, basically. I suppose it's a bit like pound and sterling, maybe. Yeah, I guess so. Um, okay, that, that, if it's true, is very interesting. It is interesting. Let me quickly show you the market, and then we'll get on to Brexit details. Okay. Um, because the market has uh, taken a swing to the downside. I managed to kind of... Uh, I saw a, a little setup last night here, um, and it's got me into the market. Um, so uh, I have traded this. Uh, it, it was really interesting, because as the market kind of came down and popped up, I took the trades um, just a little bit higher than this point. But I did look at these pivots and thought, you know, the the, the, um, the draw is probably to the pivot. So I probably could have waited another six or so pips um, before getting in. But I have seen it before where uh, a setup occurs and it doesn't go to the point that I want and I end up missing it. So I, I decided just to trigger the trade as soon as I saw mm. the setup. Mm. Um, and, uh, and yeah, and we've had a really nice waterfall to the downside. Um, I've got my target, um, which is going to be there, there isn't there is an area of consolidation just as we sit here now, and this area of consolidation is going to be is right on um, here. You know we've we've been here before and uh, and refused to break down, but I'm going to leave this trade and see if I can get it to run. Uh, if it pops up, then I, I may end up just having to uh, take a, uh, a uh, no profit on it, just because it, it looks like the, the the swing to the downside may be just starting. The the only thing that is now a, a little concerning is that that um, <clears throat> that report uh, doesn't sound too stock negative um, with uh, with uh, with what you just told me. So that that's the, that's the only kind of caveat uh, and and the only thing that would maybe. Um, spoil this trade but i'm gonna have to stick with it i mean it's um it's one of those that i'll probably i'll probably be able, to be able to make something out of it if i put a trend line here let me just see when that uh yeah it's gonna take a little while it looks like maybe even tomorrow i, I would need to before I, I can really make this trade safe but we'll have to see what i'd really like to see is this um is this really uh waterfall to, to to this point down here at least so um we could be looking at uh something that would give us maybe another maybe another 80 or so pips to the downside so um you know that'll that'll give us a a, a decent 120 pip uh, run um and it's possible that we that we i i wouldn't really use that uh, that that level anymore but i wouldn't mind seeing if it could fall down to this particular line as well so uh, i think that there's there's uh, opportunity here for for this market to come right to, right down again um the reason that the, the trade was taken i did put it out in my broadcast group that i was taking this trade so any, anybody that's on the broadcast group would have uh, would have been um, um subject to the detail a little bit of the detail i, I effectively put in the numbers and, and said you know come and join us uh, this morning if you want to find out uh, that the management of the trade so Maybe, maybe we'll talk about it later. We don't, don't really need to get it to, to now. The, the, the interesting point here is that uh, the market has shifted down and that headline uh, doesn't sound like it's in, uh, in line with, um, with, the, with the movement. So I'm not sure, I'm not sure what's going on there. Um, no, I, I'm, this has just popped up in the last five minutes or so. And mm. um, the way that reads, you can kind of take it with a grain of salt because it's... Um, this bloke doesn't know what he's talking about, obviously, because if he says that uh, that um, that China has agreed to manipulate its currency, that's, I mean, that's just ridiculous. Mm. I completely agree. I completely agree. Um, let's have a look, see if there's any, um, any extra on that. US and Canada... Uh, nothing on there. Nothing on there. Okay, so I, I can't really find uh, anything that corroborates that particular report. So we'll see we'll see what goes on there. When it comes down to Brexit, overnight, 
Jeremy Corbyn has come out and said that he will now back a people's vote. Uh, now, this is a complete. Well, I mean, it, I was going to say it's an about turn, but but the way that Labour are, um, are framing this is that it's not an about turn at all because. The way that they said that they were going to go, they were going to go through the process um, during the Labour membership meeting was that they would um, they would first start with uh, um, first start with the um, asking the Prime Minister to meet their requirements for a Brexit. So they want their Brexit. Uh, the second one was to to ask for a general election um, that uh, hasn't been passed, and then the third was to trigger this people's vote. But this is the thing about what happened last Monday when we saw those defectors from the Labour Party. That really has started the chain reaction. You know, sometimes you just need one piece to move and the log jam is cleared and everything just starts to, uh, to, to, to waterfall away. And I think that's probably what started to happen. It's just managed to nudge all those moving parts that could clear the impasse in, in Parliament. And it, and it seems that the way that they are choosing to do that is by asking for this people's vote. Now, that is risky for Labour because Labour's majority of seats uh, from memory were, um, were, were, were leave uh, seats. So it's, it's, a risky, it's a risky play. But the way that they are framing it is that they are saying that the, the, yeah, the Prime Minister's deal is so bad that they want the people to decide whether they should be ratifying the uh, the, the final deal of uh, you know the prime minister's deal. Now this is the one I was talking about yesterday with my local MP Peter Kyle. Now this is an, an amendment that he's put through, but the question really comes down to whether they are going to go with that complete amendment and have remain on the ballot paper or the prime minister's um, deal, or whether they put leave on the uh, on the um, uh, on the ballot paper as well, where we leave on WTO rules. But the most significant fact is that they are now leaning towards that people's vote. So there's still a bit of a doubt whether that will get passed through Parliament. And that's the, that's the other aspect of this. They are going to back it. But there are some Labour MPs that will not back it. And they need a majority for this to go back to the people. Um, and I think there's enough commentators out there which believe that, uh, that that's very unlikely to happen. So there's still, there's still questions on whether we'll get this people's vote. But certainly the fact that the, the, uh, the Labour leadership have now gone towards it, um, there needs to be some uh, background uh, wrangling and background arrangements going on uh, in the uh, behind the scenes. Um, and uh, if they manage to get their negotiations right, then they might be able to convince a few MPs to come on board with them. And then we eventually do get this, uh, this second referendum. So that is pretty huge. Um, yeah, bring it this... back to the markets. How do we, how do we uh, look? Well, this is, this is what I was saying yesterday. This is going to be pound positive. You know, whichever way we look at it, it's going to be pound positive. So when we look at the pound here, uh, and maybe this is some of the reason the FTSE is moving, because you can see what's happened to the pound uh, pretty much um, overnight as well. You know, today it's, uh, it's started to pick up again. Um, we had a few sessions where it, uh, where it w wasn't really doing uh, too much, but it has in the last hour just started to ease forward again against the dollar. And also, I'm also now seeing that your trade should be going great guns, uh, which it absolutely is, um, to the downside with the euro. So we are getting very close to this low. In fact, we're, we're through the, um, the closing low here uh, on the day of the 1st of uh, uh, the 25th of, of January. And we're getting very close to this low down here. And this is where I would like to see whether this um, this channel that I was looking at yesterday would uh, would actually now come into play and, and we actually start to see something which eases uh, you know further down you know I, th I think this has got some way to go into this area down here and then if it if it crosses through that area then we're on this area which is very significant uh, in my opinion so the uh, the point 83 th 39 is very significant so it could really strengthen the pound you know the pound could really strengthen off the back of this because if uh, if the people get to uh, to choose the the, the vote then that, in a way, frustrates a hard Brexit. So that's obviously good for the market, and that's good for the pound. If the people get to choose whether the vote on the whether the choice on the ballot paper is either Remain or Theresa May's deal, Theresa May's deal is also a soft Brexit. So to repeat what I was saying yesterday, um, that uh, that that can only have a positive outcome for the pound. So that so it looks to me like. Um, 
like the, uh, the 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 trade that you've got into is uh, a trade with um, which has got some real legs now. Mm, you know, potential, sure. It's got some really good potential. I mean, I don't know. The, the question really comes down to: Can it get down here um, by the twelfth of March, when we will probably have some kind of decision? Now, uh, if the people's vote is part, and now the, what what can happen on the twelfth of March is that Theresa May's deal may get passed through Parliament. So, if that's to uh, if that's to happen, then uh, in some respects, it's kind of you know. Um, uh, the the um the, the move in the pound will be a move about something that is certain and something the market can read and the the question then comes in how good is Theresa May's deal for the UK um and how will the market perceive it uh, from from that particular point but the real big one I think is that if Theresa May's deal doesn't get passed through but the people's vote gets passed through it opens up a whole host of uncertainty, but probably a little bit of quiet confidence. So that would suggest to me that we would probably start to get into something which is a bit more of a hold. So Theresa May's deal passing through could get us through this 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 line. The uh, the people's vote getting passed through might just see us bubble around this line until we get the results. So we might be in sort of for another. Uh, year or so of, uh, of of extreme sideways price action as polls change from Remain to Leave to um, to Theresa May's deal. So we, we might get a few swings around here. So I I um, first and foremost would be looking for in the near term a much stronger uh, move to the downside. That be the that be the first thing that I'd look for. Uh, after that, I, I'd want to hear the, the the story unfold, and if the story unfolds. Um, towards uh, Theresa May's deal, I'd um, I, I'd just be in a way interested to see how how um, how good that the market perceives Theresa May's deal to be. But uh, but as I say, if, if the people's vote is on, then I think we might uh, might get some fluctuations in the pound. But it's possible that uh, that that traders really like the fact that we're going to get the people's vote, and and two of the options are basically remain. Um, and we could start to see the pounds, you know, significantly strengthen. But, you know, you can see over here that uh, MT4 doesn't give me quite enough data, but we can see over here how strong this particular level is. So I think this level is now in our sights, mate. I think um, 0 .30, 0 .8, uh, 0 .8320 ish 0 .8330, I would say, actually. 0 .8330 is well within our sights now. Yeah, I've got a level at um, 8.335, I think it is. Just hang on two seconds. Eight, no, 8.340, actually. 8.340, yeah, yeah. And uh, the next uh, one is 81, pretty much. I, I, don't know. Know. <laughs> I don't know how far this can go. But what I have done is I've, uh, I've banked my second profit, as I said, I would at that line. And my stop's now at entry, so I just followed yeah. exactly what I said I was going to do. And um, Lord, give it strength, you know. That's brilliant, mate. That's brilliant. So we were, um, we, we well, we certainly um, both now in trades that are going in the right direction um, on a Tuesday, which is which is very very satisfying. When the fact that you've got a break even trade already is is brilliant. If I can get yeah, mine to the same yeah. point, I'll be very happy. Yeah, look, um, I gave a little bit back yesterday with that um, a sneaky little pound trade. I was trying to get them back to the pivots that didn't work. But it was only a very small risk, so no big deal. Um, still well ahead for the month and struggling to find anything else, to be fair. Well, this is the thing, isn't it? I mean, I think... Um... I think that uh, uh, a, a lot of traders would uh, would rightly be uh, envious of the fact that you've managed to trade this um, this pound against anything. I know Julian managed to get one as well, but um, I think rightly uh, some envy should kick in. Uh, uh, um, I, I include myself in uh, in that camp. Um, I would have loved to have got something with the pound. Um, the, the the one trade that I really regret not taking was when we had i can't remember what the announcement was but where the, the the trade that i regret not taking is the is the uh, the pound uh pound uh, euro, euro pound when we had um this move here a, a few weeks ago and i was looking at these um uh, let me bring this on a four hour instead 
I was looking at the pivot up here. This one here. Can't remember what the announcement was. It was very vicious, but I was I was really uh, I was keen and I was advocating this particular that. level. Well, what um, a ball of a trade that would have been. Well, yeah, I mean it's you know what a what a cracker. I mean I don't know. I guess you'd have your, your stops at the highs there, so it would have been a, a pretty wide stop. But um, I mean it's interesting actually when 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 you kind of look at it in uh, in context. This this is the the, uh, the trade area here. When you look at it in context, then really. Uh, only results in a three to one. I mean, it's, it's interesting, isn't it? Because it's a, it's a really good move to the downside. Um, and I would have probably, uh, I'll probably would have held on. I don't, I, you know, re-entering would have been a, a little bit tricky. But there was, there was two, the, the, the great thing about this is that it's all about the monthly pivot. You know, we, we were looking a few weeks ago at uh, the pound, weren't we? And you were, you were illustrating how it bounced off the weekly. Weekly chart. The weekly chart, and, and and you know the last two months we've had a really strong reaction uh, off this monthly pivot, um, and uh, maybe that continues. You know, maybe we see the monthly pivot refused again next month. Who knows? Um, because this will be stepping down. So um, so maybe we, we we start to track the monthly pivot. Um, you know, right the way back to its base again. But uh, but yeah, I I think that's uh, that's the interesting thing. Easier trade, no doubt. You know, to, to try and get in off one of these monthly pivot bounces because it was much less vicious. And I wish I could remember what that was. That might have been a vote. That might well have been a vote. The 15th, that might well have been a vote. I think it was, wasn't it? It was that vote in Parliament. Oh, uh, it was on Tuesday. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was the one that was delayed. It was actually Theresa May's deal that got absolutely smashed yeah, yeah. up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, remember now. So that's where we're. That's where we are, mate. That's where we are. Um, so we're. So we're both in pretty good shape. Uh, just quickly back to the footsie. Oh, no, actually, do, do you want to look at some? Um... Yeah, let's do that. Yeah. Uh, so I missed it. Two minutes to get. You're not going to add to or change your position at this stage of the open. I'm sure. No, I was just going to uh, explain a little bit more about uh, uh, the entry, but um, I think uh, let's look at some slingshots. All right, uh, let's do that chart. Is there? Okay, so just repeating that uh, the euro pound trade, what I've done, taken the second amount of profit not uh, not that long ago, as a matter of fact, uh, as we went through the level, and stops are now at entry. Uh, that's around about two and a half to one at this point. We'll see how that continues. Um, nothing to do here. I, you know, if you're not in this trade, it's going to be pretty tough to get in it, I think, because it just keeps going and going and going without reasonable pullback. Um, of course, I'm not concerned about that in any way, shape or form at this point, and I, I really don't need to scale back into it. But if, if per chance, it did come back to this line here, uh, I would consider it. I've got no reason not to consider it. Uh, a fresh new trade on this wouldn't hurt one bit. But at this point, Nothing to do for me. I'll just cruise along and see how we go. Um, pound yen. Yen. Uh, what has the yen done today? I was looking at that. I think it has strengthened a bit, hasn't it? Yeah, it has. Uh, even overnight, since this uh, this big rally stopped in midstream on uh, on US session, I don't know if that was news driven or not, but the yen has strengthened by the look of that on everything, of course, except the pound. Um, that shows you the strength in the pound, of course, and, and why we're looking here at uh, a reason to go short. I don't know. Um, it is a bit tough, isn't it? But it, it's really showing you that the strength in the pound is uh, is not just against the US dollar, that's for sure. Uh, it is strong. So um, I, I don't think I'd like to be trading against that unless I got an absolute guilt-edged uh, setup. And uh, that could come, of course, uh, off this area here. If we get another uh, high here, a little lower high, we could have a bit of a confluence area to play with. But I don't know that I'd be too keen, given what Ash has just said. 
uh, it does look as though the pound is going to be very hard to hold down at this point. So probably not that keen to be trading against it. Trade with it. Uh, pound yen long. I don't want to do that either because we're at an obvious resistance level and that resistance level. If I go to the daily charts and put that on there is while it's not the strongest level I've ever seen it's it does have a little bit of form through here um, resistance here resistance here we're there again so perhaps there is a little bit of a pullback on offer if I look at uh, the previous rally then you would suggest that there's probably a little bit more left in this and maybe we're going to take on the highs at around about the 149 mark um, you know on on the strength of this, you, you would expect the second leg to be just as strong, if not stronger. And uh, that kind of points up here somewhere, as far as I can see. So, yeah, it's going to be tough to be trading against that, that's for sure. The Aussie um, has done now what I wanted it to do yesterday. When it was up here, I wanted it to pull back down to this level, and um, it didn't do so. Now, it's, it has now come off these highs and has tested the daily pivot where it's gone into consolidation i'll be keen to to track this throughout this little period now uh, whichever side it breaks in particular if it breaks to the high side uh, i'll be looking to trade this short now i know that sounds a bit weird but um, this could well be a little bit of a clear out here this candle here is very very strong that candle here's stronger and i know that was on the back of fake news, uh, more potential fake news, um, but it does give you the indication if there's any weakness around about the place, then the market is willing to sell this off pretty quickly. So I'm quite, it's kind of okay up here if we get the signal, but if we don't, um, a break of this level would see me uh, looking at TP1 close on Aussie. Am I willing to trade it long? is probably the question that I need to ask. And, oh, uh, look, I, I'd want to see a deep retracement, to be absolutely frank. I, I'd, I'd need to see it down at the weekly pivot before I even consider trading this long at this point. I don't see, uh, I don't see me getting long anywhere before the weekly pivot. So um, that's an equation I don't need to calculate at this point. The only thing I'm looking for here at the moment would be shorts. And bearing in mind, you know, when I'm trading on the 30-minute chart, I'm, I'm happy to go either way. I'm not predicting trend. I'm not predicting breakouts. Uh, I'm simply following what the candles are telling me at, at strategic levels. So if the candles tell me they're prepared to go short at this level, that's exactly what I'll do, given uh, that there's no massive brick wall standing in my way. Um, but the only place I'd want to go to is here. You know, I'm not saying I'm going to stay in a big trend move or look for a, a massive amount of pips here. That's not the case. I'm simply looking for a little move, a little bit out of the market as it bounces off support and resistance. That's pretty much the game for me. So, uh, you know, when I'm saying I'll, I'll go short here, it's not a prediction. It's, it's only what will happen if I see a certain set of circumstances. Pretty simple. Okay, uh, there's one that um, that is interesting. Would have been uh, an interesting one had this candle been a, a bit more decisive. That's something I'd like to trade, a break and retest of the pivot, but uh, obviously not trading at that point in time anyway. You can see this is doing exactly that. It's coming off the top of this range. That's what I was looking for yesterday as well. And couldn't get a, a, a tradable scenario in uh, in the UK session and I was in bed sound asleep when this one happened so no trade there for me same things happened today we've come uh, straight back to the top of the range we've tried to get through it failed and if there was a trade at all to be had it probably was that bar there but gee you want to have big kahunas to trade it it's only a very tiny one and it's the wrong time of day of course for me uh, that didn't measure too much, did it? How big is that candle? Not even three pips. Um, so yeah, that's not in not in my category at all. 
and that's only an equal equal high so it's um it's not where i would get in the market um what happens next well if we hit this support level and bounce back to here and put in a lower high then i'll get interested in trading down to the weekly pivot so that's uh that's euro dollar that's definitely on my watch and uh and alert so I'm looking for a lower high in this vicinity to trade it short can I trade it long? Yes, yeah, sure I can. No problem, but not from here. I'd need to see some reaction off a support level. Uh, this one or this one, either one would be fine. EuroCAD. Uh, look, the only reason I'm really interested in this is because it's it's at a tradable point. Um, I don't see anything there that really gives me a shove in either direction. Um, one thing does, I suppose, and that's the pivots very, very close together. That's going to act, I would think, as a, a bit of a magnet to price. So I'll be looking for something off this area. There's a bit of a confluence going on here. Uh, if I get the signal that this is ready to go short and test these levels, then that's what I'll be looking for on EuroCAD as well. That's the four-hour chart. 30-minute chart uh, will probably, well, obviously, if it does set up, give us an earlier indication. Um, so I'll be looking at that line as well, and maybe there's a confluence coming up through here or even up through here. We'll probably use that one. So we're in the right zone here, looking for uh, something in this area that tells me this is ready to go short. Won't be going long here, won't be trading into the resistance. Um, so same, same, everything's the same really. There's nothing changing. I need price to be down here if I'm thinking long, and I need price here if I'm thinking short. So... Short it is at the moment. Dollar yen. Now, dollar yen, uh, I think we spoke about this just a little bit earlier, where we got a skyrocket <coughs> through the early part of US session yesterday and then a waterfall as it uh, is went into decline. That's the US session I'm talking about. And thus far today, we have seen the yen strengthen against the dollar or vice versa, whichever you uh, prefer to use as your gauge um this makes it interesting because if i were to get a significant lower high here inside this range uh, i think i'd be willing to trade this short so there's nothing really lining up apart from the aussie the euro uh and euro uh, sorry the aussie against the dollar the euro against the dollar and euro against the cad they all look similar but this one's quite the reverse same sort of setup but um different set set of circumstances in that uh, we're trading against the US dollar in some instances and with it in the others. So, yeah, could be an interesting scenario if we have to make that decision. But same applies. I'll be looking for a, a lower high in here. Cable, I think I've, um, I've had enough of cable for the month. Uh, it's, it's going to net me a good result, I do believe. Well, it already has. I can't lose on it. But uh i don't want to give it all back that's for sure so um, the ones that we've managed to get into in the longer term time frames have been good and the shorter not so good so uh, i think i'll be staying out of the pound pairs uh, for the rest of the month on the shorter time frames if they look good on the bigger ones then happy days no problem but the intraday time frames uh, 30 minute hourly four hourly probably even uh, I might be giving a miss um, my opinion look uh, I don't think my opinion is going to count for much here but I'll give it to you anyway there's a there's a suggestion that we're a little bit top in here uh, if we were to get a lower high here under different circumstances I'd probably be willing to trade against it but under the current circumstances I think it's best to stay out to be fair Euro-yen is exactly the same as described on pound-yen and uh, dollar-yen, rather, um, lower high here. Not as good, because this is going to take time. When I, I'd like to see these form in a, a, a bit of time frame. This would have to go back too quickly to give me the, the lower high now, so I'd, I'd much rather look at this maybe... Uh, US session I'll be asleep so maybe tomorrow we could have a look at that 
I don't think it's going to happen for me. This is an hourly chart, of course. Uh, so anything can happen quickly, but I don't want it to happen quickly. And that's my point. If it took three or four hours and, and got up to here, maybe a different story. We'll check that later, but it's not going to happen in the session. Um, Aussie yen. Yeah, I'll have a look at Aussie yen. Why not? Uh, this is giving me uh, a little bit of an indication that we are a little bit toppy here. I'll go to a bigger time frame or at least a little bit wider to give me uh, some more perspective on that. But that level seems to be a hard nut to crack in the last uh, couple of weeks, that's for sure. It is uh, just shy of the 80 cent mark. So... Um, I'd probably like to see this close underneath this line here and then retest not only the line but the trend line as well. So the duck under here, retest and give me something that I can trade down to the uh, the support level. Providing there's enough room for a decent profit in here, there should be. The risk of about 20, 25 pips. You'd probably get two to one out of that so i don't think it'd be such a bad option to take that's the four hour chart 30 minutes um not setting up at the moment of course uh, it ha has to get below this level uh there may be just a sneakier one here as well on the 30 minute chart but it might come from here yeah there's a little bit of a confluence going on there let's keep our eye on it and see how it pans out. So break and retest of this area, but break and retest of the daily pivot. Well, it's already happened, really, the retest of the daily pivot, so it's not essential. Um, but I'd like this load to be cleared, and then a retest, then we'll be, uh, we'll be looking for something there. Euro Aussie has kind of set that up uh, in a kind of magnified fashion. This is a bloody big false break, if it's a false break. You could, you could really hardly call it that because there's probably plenty of opportunity to make money on the way up and the way down. So uh, to call it a false break of this trend line is probably a, a, a stretch too far. Um, for that reason, I'd be looking for something a little bit better than what I'm seeing now. Uh, in fact, I don't like where price is right now. It's, it's very confusing between the two pivots. It's in the middle of the range. Uh, no, not, not something I'd like to see. Aussie CAD, uh, speaking of ranges or channels, uh, is dead set uh, following uh, nicely here. Has uh, closed above, above the monthly pivot, so I'd be expecting a test of the top of this range. I've got a four hour chart that's telling me there's a resistance trend line coming through here. Probably a little bit close to here to trade it though. So yeah, not that fussed on, on that. But yeah, 30 minute chart might be a bit different. There'll be a bit of a gap there. What have we got? In fact, there's a partial setup there now, but um, first candle of London session is not, I'm not a fan of. Um, there is a break and retest of that trend line that I've just put on my chart. As, as I said, I'm not a fan of trading the first candle of London, but uh, if you are, then uh, there's probably a worse trade to take. No, there's not a worse trade to take. Sorry, I thought this was inside today's uh, price action. It's not. So that makes this today's high, and I certainly won't be trading into the high of the day. That's something I simply don't do. So that's pretty much uh, pretty much me, mate. I suppose there are some opportunities, given that we've got uh, resistance levels to contend with or yep. to use, if you like. <clears throat> uh, so I'll keep my eyes on those, but at this at this stage, uh, I'm probably counting out the pound pairs uh, on the smaller okay. time frames, and I might just concentrate on uh, dollar yen, Aussie dollar, and euro dollar, euro cad maybe. Well, and let me give you um, give me give you some uh, Brexit uh, Brexit updates so you can kind of put some times in your diary <clears throat> to yep. see when you want to check these charts. Um, now this this move that we've got going on with the uh, with the pound may well be sorry with the, with the FTSE may well be pound related. You can see it's just it's just the first bar is just collapsed. Mm. 
Um, so this um, this is this is going all in the right direction, and and, and I think that there's there's a potentially another forty pips before it gets caught up down here. So I, I think uh, this this um, this trade is well worth just sticking with and, and seeing what happens now. But I think I, you know my my target is going to be my target is down here. So uh, quite quite a we're probably about we're probably over halfway there now. You know, not not uh, not too much further to go. Well, in fact, more than more than halfway there. So, hopefully, another forty pips uh, on offer here. And then what I'll do is I'll, I'll just see what happens here and see if it can continue to collapse, which is possible. I mean, if this is uh, to do with the pound, then um, <clears throat> then uh, the pound strength could really see this FTSE weaken. I can find no corroboration of that uh, that story uh, to do with the yuan. So uh, that yeah, would sound. Surprising. No, I mean, it, it, it sounds a bit strange to me. Um, and, um, you know, I, the, the question for me is, will, will I have the, uh, uh, well, the wherewithal really to, to, uh, to, to uh, take a trade that, uh, you know, to, that would continue down at this point? Because there are two, maybe three levels that are, uh, you know, we can aim for down here. Just looking back at this daily chart, this is definitely one of them. The, the, the potential scenario we could see is for the trade to come down and I've, you know, I've got to go to my, um, I've got to go to my, uh, my fail safe and my fail safe default setting is for the, uh, the head and shoulders pattern. So my first, uh, my first thought will be, will we start to see it come down, pop up? And then give us some something of a reversal pattern, so we kind of meander around in this area and possibly break down from that point, or maybe it it just comes down and then just starts to move back to the upside. So th there's two there's two possibilities when it comes to this line. Um, uh, w w if w there's two possibilities if it creates this pattern, I should say within this line. The second possibility is that we just crash straight through this level and the, and we can actually st uh, continue to see the move uh, uh, to the downside. Now, I want to see this level before I do anything. Um, is uh, it's probably the key aspect to this. But th but there's a chance that we could go uh, go much lower. And as I say, the, the the question for me is, will I have the wherewithal to hang on for uh, potentially what what could be another uh, 120 pips or, or do I take my uh, my trade off the table here? I'm not really one that's keen on taking uh, part parts of trades. I like to kind of like uh, see my plan, uh, put it all on, leave it all on, get to a level, take it all off. Um, if it bounces, get back in uh, 100 percent again and, and, you know, do, do the same thing. Um, so I won't be taking uh, partial profit. I'll probably either close here. Um, and look for that bounce. Now, looking at this bounce, actually, what does look even more interesting is if the bounce kind of goes into line with uh, with the uh, with the trend line. So that that could be uh, an interesting scenario as well, where it bounces here um, and then maybe try and get back in on the right shoulder and, and then see if it comes back down here. But possibly if it runs into this line, we look for upside. Now, that is quite a bit out uh, out in front and interestingly uh the date that um it looks like the two lines will meet is going to be the date of theresa may's deal so um you know i'm sure that's uh alchemy to to a certain degree and, and uh, i'm not saying that uh the charts the 12th, will miss right? i beg your pardon that's the 12th you're talking about. yes yes <laughs> right on the 12th it, you know that it looks like the two lines will meet there um the line may not yeah, well, the line the line might not be there. It might might be a little bit lower. So, you know, as I say, that could be complete alchemy that that I'm uh, I, that that line has just appeared. There is also this level down here, which kind of like runs us into the end of next, uh, the end of this week into the start of next week. If this uh, if this does continue to fall, that will be my my absolute area, uh, probably around about the sixty nine thirty five, which is going to be at least 100 pips away from the point that I would I would consider taking the trade off. So a <clears throat> few decisions to be made, but, you know, uh, certainly good decisions to, to be made, whether you take um, uh, 120 pips or um, what would it be, end up being, whether you take 100 and probably, uh, yeah, whether you take about 120 pips or whether you take 220 pips, it's a, it's a nice, nice conundrum. So that that's uh, that's the... That's where I am right now. But let's put the uh, let's put the Brexit diary into our calendar so we can be aware what may well drive the market for the day um, with the pound and with the FTSE. 
So we start with the um, we start with the, uh, the the report that you touched on about the uh, Theresa May considering the delay to Brexit, um, and I'll read you the full report because uh, I, I think it's it's uh, it, g- it gives us context of what we should be looking for with timings. Sure. So Theresa May is considering a plan to delay Brexit and stop the UK leaving the European Union with no deal next month, according to uh, people familiar with the situation. The Prime Minister is expected to allow her cabinet to discuss extending the deadline beyond the 29th of March at a crunch meeting on Tuesday, which is today. So that's the first thing to put in our diary. This is all about today, which is why we're seeing the movements. One of the people said, uh, sorry, one of the people said she would then reveal to the cabinet's conclusion in an announcement to parliament later today. So it's all kind of like stacking up right now. May is likely to carry on trying to get a deal done on time. But if no agreement is reached in the next month, a delay of some kind would be needed. Allowing the UK scheduled exit from the EU to be postponed would be a huge political gamble. On one hand, it would avert mass resignations from pro-EU ministers in May's team and potentially a defeat in Parliament this week. But it would risk also risk a destabilizing backlash from Eurosceptic Conservatives. So the the Tories are so split on this particular uh, situation. This is what has put her uh, and backed her into a corner, Um, even though I think many would argue that she's done it to herself. A delay would be a major climb down for the British leader, who has spent the past two years insisting that the UK will leave the the EU on schedule. It comes within hours of another major U-turn, that of opposition Labour leader Jeremy Corbyn, deciding to back a second referendum. Together, the announcement will make pro-Brexit politicians fear that the divorce could eventually be abandoned. Now, I think that's very significant, which is why the full report is worth reading. May could even use that fear to her advantage to persuade them to back her deal rather than risk seeing Brexit reversed. So this is all about uh, hijinks and, uh, and, uh, and, and, and poker facing going on, I think. Now, the pound strengthened. Investors and business want to avoid a crash out of uh, a crash out exit and most welcome more time to prepare or even rethink the divorce. In just over a month, the UK is meant to be departing from the union it's belonged to for 40 years, but the outlook has never looked more uncertain. May's hands are increasingly tied by an unpopular divorce deal she sealed with the EU, but the parliament, but the parliament has rejected by a landslide. Brexit has proved to be such a diverse. Uh, sorry, divisive issue that both mainstream parties have suffered defections. Delaying Brexit has the potential to split May's cabinet and her ruling party, triggering a rebellion from Brexit supporting Tories who might even try to bring down her government. In an effort to minimise the revolt, May could argue she is not ruling out a no deal for all time. She could say it's simply not an option for March the 29th. But May's allies accept she's run out of time and must now choose between angering her pro-Brexit colleagues and alienating as many as 20 pro-European ministers who are threatening to quit to to vote against her and stop a no-deal exit from the EU in Parliament on Wednesday. So under the Premier's plan this week, May will chair a cabinet discussion on extending uh, extending Brexit at 9.30. So here's the diary. So we're looking at in about an hour. She's going to be uh, chairing the discussion. Um, May will update Parliament on the Cabinet's decision after 12.30. So then we have another three hours after that. So in four hours time, we get clarity. Um, The government will propose a motion on the Brexit state of play by Tuesday night. And the House of Commons will debate and vote on May's Brexit motion on Wednesday. So this goes into tomorrow. If she doesn't find a way to remove the threat of no deal departure next month, May is likely to suffer a spat of resignations. Cabinet ministers, including the rest of it, is not really that significant. Uh, If she does back a delay, May's pro-Brexit colleagues will accuse her of betraying and could even support a vote of no confidence in the government, which um, can only now come from the Labour side. So this is where the uh, the general election starts to come into play. Um, May returns uh, returned on Monday night from the EU summit in Egypt, where one EU leader after another asked her whether she would delay Brexit. EU President Council Donald Tusk said it was the rational thing to do. So the EU supports this uh, this delay, and the question now comes in: Will she? Uh, 
<clears throat> will she effectively back that delay? And uh, will Parliament vote on it? But, but she, you know, she's... Uh, She's incredibly resilient, Theresa May. There's no two ways about it, but she really has kind of. And even yesterday, I was reading a report that said that she was looking to extend her premiership beyond Brexit, where initially it looked like she was going to stand down in the summer. So if she's looking to extend her premiership, this will not make her popular at all. And it's not only because of the U-turn. I think the thing that's not going to make her popular is her whole management of this uh, situation you know as i say uh, some people will have sympathy with her but uh, i'm in the camp that she's done it to herself as soon as she she uh, made her um her speech uh, on the brexit delay in the uh, on the brexit um departure in the first place the first thing she did was put down red lines no single market no freedom of movement no customs union and she's been unbendable on those three aspects and that means that when the negotiations took shape, she wasn't able to then back down. And it's got to the point now she's being forced to back down, which makes her incredibly susceptible and incredibly weak. So I think uh, I think Theresa, Theresa May's days are probably numbered. Well, <laughs> I'm kind of stunned because, you know, we've been through so many of these little inc incidents and uh, come to the table with a new deal, come to the table with this, that, the other thing, blah, blah, blah. blah. If you're not a, uh, um, a UK resident, I suppose, we don't really care what happens to Theresa May, to be fair, whether she's popular or unpopular or, or otherwise. It's, it's what she's doing to um, her, her country. It's yeah. <clears throat> currency to her trades... Or, or terms of trade with people to indeed her ability to trade with people uh, or the country's ability to trade with people that's really a concern and i i can't believe frankly that you know, as you say she's tenacious but i can't believe frankly that she has lasted this long yeah do you know it's been such an unbelievable chain of events what's happened in the uk for the last four years and I think the, the chain of events really started way before Brexit. It started when Jeremy Corbyn was voted leader of the Labour Party because he was always the unlikely candidate. And in actual fact, he only scraped in to the leadership challenge at the, the 11th hour because they were looking for one other person to put forward. And to re and, uh, and Jeremy Corbyn is, is part of a band of... Uh, uh, rebels, if you like, within the Labour Party that <clears throat> effectively pushed him to the fore and said, it's your turn this time. So, you know, he, he didn't he, he, he just about got enough of, um, enough backers to put him into the leadership challenge. And the reason that that was significant was because the three other leadership challenges were all Blairites. So they were all pro EU. They were all capitalists. You know, uh, Theresa May, uh, sorry, Theresa May, Jeremy Corbyn is very, very much a, a socialist. Some people even say he's a Marxist. Um, John, uh, John McDonald, his, um, his um, um, uh, right hand man, I can't think of his, um, can't think of his, his, uh, his oh, Chancellor, his, his, chance, his shadow Chancellor is, um, is, is a um, self um, confessed Marxist. So they are an extreme side to the party. Now, their vote came in, uh, as I say, it was a good, um, a good six months to, to a year before the, the, uh, the, the, uh, the, the Brexit um, announcement was, was made that the Conservatives would, would, uh, would give the people a vote. But the reason that that was significant is that there's been no genuine opposition to Theresa May. And I think she would have fallen a long, long time ago uh, if, uh, if, if there was some genuine yeah. opposition and, and if there was some, some uh, you know, th there was somebody in the Labour Party that was just a bit more rounded <clears throat> and a bit more towards the, uh, the, 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 the Tony Blair um, um, model instead of being so left, you know, the, because really government is so different now. And David Cameron leaving was another huge aspect. Brexit was obviously another huge aspect. Boris Johnson pulling out of the um, the, the leadership was a, another huge aspect. So there's been just a catalogue of things that have gone on 
that uh, that have shaped where we are now. But it's been absolute carnage. And I text my friends on the day of the referendum and, and I said to them, this will be carnage. Uh, and I think when it's really kind of unfolded, the last two years have been uh, relatively calm. When we kind of look at the predictions that were made by some of the economists and by the Bank of England and, so, and, the, and the Treasury about what was going to happen to the UK economy, none of them really happened and if they had happened we'd probably in this we'd probably be in this particular position looking at something very very different because if the uk economy had weakened significantly enough i think backing a, a people's vote and that people's vote probably voting to, to remain in the eu would have been much much more likely um, because of what the economist said, because the economist said just a vote to, to leave the EU is going to change <clears throat> the uh, the UK economy. Because what they expected was business would it would immediately try to pull out. But just as this this marriage has been uh, so difficult to get out of because it's we're so uh, entwined with the EU, it's the same for business. You know, business the last thing that they want to do is uh, is jump ship and uh, and hop to another country. You know, mm. they, they want to try and uh, make sure that uh, that there is some sort of status quo. Yeah, and they can, they? yeah I mean, you know, everybody, everybody's just relying on hopium, aren't they? That that uh, that the government do the right thing. And, and I think that because the Tories have, have traditionally been a, um, a party for business, I think business probably rightly has gambled that the, that the the Tory party would listen to them. But I don't think that they would they, they necessarily knew that they were going to be um, uh, faced with somebody who is so unbelievably belligerent about uh, about the way that they see that the country um, that it's led us to where we are, because really, as I say, you know, to have to have uh, sympathy for Theresa May is very very difficult because of that that very fact. You know, she's just she's just been um, just a, a very very uh, a, a difficult leader to like uh, in many respects. As, as much sympathy I have with her on occasions. I, uh, I I then fall back into this frustration with her that she's just uh, s seemingly so so short sighted. So uh, you know that there's 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 a few more twists and turns to come yet, mate. But it's certainly looking right now that the Remainers have at this particular point just about wrestled back control. Um, and it, maybe. Yeah, well, and this is the thing. This, you know, get, get back to trading. This is, you know, only positive for the pound. Uh, and interestingly, it, it could well be uh, negative for the FTSE, regardless of what we saw with um, the uh, the reports from the uh, the negotiations with uh, with Donald Trump and uh, and China. You know, I, I thought that was going to be the, the 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 driver for the FTSE, but um, I kind of uh, I kind of missed this one that it could be about Brexit, but it looks like it, it may well be. No, well, you have missed the trade, mate. That's the main, most important thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and yeah. I hope that continues. Um, just one thing. And look, guys in the room, I, I know it can be terribly laborious listening to Brexit, but, uh, we, you know, we can't ignore it. It's it's the elephant in the room. So we, we simply have to talk about it. Ash, I, I'm going to throw a curly one at you right now. Yep. Um, what do you know about the Lisbon Treaty? Um. The Lisbon Treaty. I know that's uh, a terrible thing to ask you without notice, but well, it, the, 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 there's there's um, not a whole bunch, but uh, but it, it depends on on what part of the uh, the Lisbon Treaty you're asking me about, because well, mate, I the didn't Lisbon even know it existed to be fair. <laughs> oh, okay. Until about half an hour ago. You 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 only just heard about it half an hour ago. Yes. Um. Th there's this guy gone off on. I think it's the Forex Factory Forum. He's gone off um, without knowing what he's talking about, but he's suggested that inside the Lisbon Treaty, there are all sorts of things that will make um, any remainder th think twice. And I'm going to read that overnight. Or, or, sorry, I won't read the whole thing, but I'll, I'll try and get a summary of it somewhere and, and read what that actually says. Because it, it, what this guy says has been debunked completely, but there is um, a little bit of fire around the smoke that he's raised, apparently. So I, I thought you may have, in fact, if this guy was correct, this would have come up way before now. You know, his assertions are that um, you'd be crazy to remain rather than. Rather than well, 
the, 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 the thing about the Lisbon Treaty is um, it, I know it was brought together from a couple of different treaties and, and it's sort of um, and it's, you know, to, to do with the kind of constitution of the, of the European Union. But I don't I don't really know um, what uh, all the details um, of it are. And that's the key with the Lisbon Treaty. It's not kind of a uh, um, and which is why I was asking about, you know, which aspect of it, because it's not really a one sentence answer. Um, it kind of um, it, it's almost the, uh, the, the the laws and regulations of uh, of the European Union. Um, yes, and it doesn't it, exactly right. But it, but it doesn't surprise me at all that somebody would say Remainers would um, would change their mind if they read the Lisbon Treaty because they are probably he he probably does have a point uh, in as much that there are going to be things in the Lisbon Treaty that you would not want to be a part of. But this is not about one aspect of one treaty. You know, this is about the whole picture, and that's the, the maybe the the point that this guy is missing. We know that there's things wrong with the EU. We know there's things wrong with uh, with freedom of movement and um, and um, the, uh, uh, the the um, um, s some of the some of the points about the, uh, uh, the the European Army and 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 many other aspects and and maybe you know further integration. We we know all that. So to pick out certain points of the Lisbon Treaty and say read this and then see if you want to stay in the EU. That's not really what this question ever has been about and what it ever should come down to, because anybody can use an aspect of a piece of text as propaganda to put their point across, specifically when you've got 27 other countries um, or 28 countries, uh, if you include the UK, that have to sign it. Um, and have to agree to all the aspects of the, of the treaty. There's going to be certain things that um, that that, uh, that are going to be in in the UK's favour, and there are going to be certain things that are, are going to be um, you know away from the UK's favour. So I, I, I don't really see why that argument would hold much water, if I'm honest. No, look, um, this guy's just going off because he can. You know, you know the keyboard warriors that I'm talking about. Yeah. I was wondering if there's any uh, twist in that yet to come. And uh, I'll, I'll do a bit of reading overnight and see, if, see what I can make out of it. But, yeah, I, I accept what you're saying. and That's perfectly fine. Yeah, I mean, I think it'd be like going through uh, the Treaty of Versailles. You know, it'd be, it'd be the same sort of thing. It, it, you know, if, if somebody says you know what was uh, what's the aspects of the of the treaty of versailles then you, you'd have uh, an overview but there are definitely going to be things in the treaty of versailles that you sort of go what they agree to that um you know just because that's negotiation isn't it you know that's 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 how you you kind of get so many countries kind of coming together um and agreeing that uh, that that one thing would be um would be accepted i mean uh, you know just down to the reparations i think that there would probably be a few problems glad i didn't have to draft it what a job wow <laughs> yeah absolutely um interesting overnight as well the the the, uh, the meeting that uh, theresa may was at in sham or shake was um to do with um the uh the eu um uh, uh, agreeing with some of the arab states particularly libya to give libya money to uh, fund their their uh, their lifeguards, uh, if if you like, their border control, and uh, and fish out some of the um, some of the uh, the, the migrants that uh, that are trying to get um, into Europe. Um, so they are they are funding these people. They are funding the the um, the the, the, um, uh, the border guards to fish uh, fish out um, these uh, these these migrants and take them back to Libya. But when you look at the treatment that these these uh, these people have received, um, you know, off the back of it, how they how they are treated in, in some of these camps, it's pretty disgusting. Mm -hmm. And when when it kind of comes down to and, and this is the thing that the UK are not um, exempt from this, you know, that they, they, uh, they 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 know what's going on. Um, when you look at uh, the the, uh, the the world crisis, you, you kind of. You know, you know th this is where world order kind of you know starts to shape and it, and it starts to kind of you, you start to get a few questions about what's going on because the reason that these people are leaving these countries is because you know a lot of these countries are war torn uh, there's a lot of torture there's there's a lot of uh, you know that the, the the leadership in these countries are, are very very cruel um and this is the difficult aspect when it comes down to war and and this is the difficult aspect to, you know even when it comes down to the the, the iraq war the the 
the the whole premise that you don't get involved in the Middle East that was always said. You don't get involved in the Middle East. You don't get in, involved in somebody else's uh, disputes. But the problem with that is that inevitably you will get some people that uh, you know refugees do, just want to get out. Rights. You come back to human rights, and that's that's where yeah. it becomes very very sticky. And yes, yes, I, I kind of get that, but I also kind of get stay out of other people's business. Yeah, well, it, but but the, this is this is the thing. What happens when your pe people's business becomes your business because you've got so many um, so many refugees coming to your country? Um, and that's been the problem. We've had the we had the refugee crisis, didn't we, a, a, a year or so ago, and uh, and it's put a lot of pressure on Angela Merkel because she accepted so many uh, migrants uh, to come into to, to, to Germany. That that's um, you know a million that, uh, that, 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 mm. that 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 put a lot of pressure. And this is where you start to say uh, the world has become so now um, married. You know, we're not. I don't think we're in the faith. We're, we're in that to that era anymore that we can stay out of uh, each other's business because we are becoming such an international community where people will just, uh, you know, go and uh, go and try and get a better life for themselves. Um, but what I would really like to see, from my perspective, it's completely um, ideological, and, and I'm sure it could never really happen because there's so many differences of uh, uh, of opinion and, and differences. Of, uh, of beliefs but what I'd really like to see is rather than throwing a little bit of money at some border guards to uh, effectively entrap these people again uh, where they're treated very very badly I, I would like to see some international aid go to some of these countries that are um, uh, impoverished um, and work with the governments to make sure that they, they follow certain lines um, of um, of agreement to make sure that their, their people are treated well, and and I think that the the West should really be giving money to to these countries just to see if they can uh, um, make make these places a, a, a better place to live, <clears throat> rather than just ignoring the scenario. You know, I think this does really come down to finance, and I think that the the, the West can afford it, and I think that the West has uh, been very very good. Um, over the centuries of going into these places and uh, and tearing apart the uh, the, um, the, um, the the natural resources that, that they can use for their own financial benefits, because people will say that those things are many many years ago, but everything has a knock on effect. There's, you know, there's 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 no yeah, there's no uh, there's, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, you know, the the, the 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 reason that the UK is so rich is not because we what we've done in the last fifty years. Is is what went on in the in the previous you know three to five hundred years, um, and that did did mean that we went to other countries and you know like India for example, and uh, and used and took exactly what we wanted to uh, to to benefit ourselves. So I think that there's got to be some international order that kind of comes back and says right, it's time to give back. And if you don't think that this is um, this is something that you have a responsibility to do, then uh, then accept the problem. That you are going to continue to get refugees that want to get into your country um, and stop paying uh, stop paying border guards to kind of rip them out the sea and torture them like because it. it's a, it's pretty horrific, mate. It's pretty. If you'd seen this report, it, it was it's horrific what these people have to go through. You know that they're they're, they're they're trying to escape their countries for whatever reason, and then they get pulled out the sea and uh, and and as I say, tortured. And they're not just tortured; they're tortured at gunpoint, so they have to accept the torture. Yeah, you can't believe, can you? It's hideous. It's hideous. It's hideous. Like and that. the European Union are paying for this. I'd like to see um I'd like to see all of that change in a in a heartbeat, but wow. Where do you start? Um I don't know. Thanks, uh, Christo. Thanks, Christo. I uh <laughs> I didn't study. Oh, do you know what? I did, I've done a little bit of political science, actually. I, I, I have to say, though, uh, I, um, I, I need my right hand man next to me. So uh, I've got to have uh, I've got to have Jeff with me wherever I go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. No, on the drum <laughs> table. Man. That's it. <laughs> yeah, it's as good as it gets. <laughs> look, um, before we go too much further, look, uh, 30 minute charts. Uh, yeah. Have have obviously closed. I, I've only got one thing that I, I really want to point out, and it is Eurocad. 
So let's go there and then we'll come back and, uh, and, and pretty much wrap up things, I suppose. I need to find the control thing. I've lost it. There it is. Okay. Uh, EuroCAD, as I said before, uh, one thing I am looking for with this cross is a reversal. Now, there's a few things that are pointing me in that direction. This is one. Uh, this is exactly what I wanted to see, a bit of a clear out here. So better, better still if it takes out uh, the highs here, that would be cool. And then we get a... A, a reversal of some kind here and the level I'd like to trade is this level here so uh, if I can find a setup to trade it to that level I'll certainly look to do that but uh, if I don't and it breaks this level in fact if I don't find a setup I'll probably just set an order short here that's EuroCAD, okay? Um, obvious targets down here, the daily and weekly pivot. I want to take a look at what oil's doing just to see if the CAD uh, can change tack here at all. And what oil did overnight was quite uh, significant. In fact, it put in a massive fall down to about 55 mark. Uh, a little bit below that. It's, it's come off just about 57. So it's gone two big numbers here. And the only thing that does concern me is, is the bottom of this channel where we are going to find resistance and the CAD. Uh, oh, sorry, we're going to find support here. Uh, and the CAD should rally on that, in my opinion. There is a bit of a, a confluence going across here. So yeah, if, <clears throat> have you seen the daily as well? Uh, uh, Jerry? Is that the that's the daily, isn't it? The daily, yeah, yeah. I think this is a fascinating one with this one. I, I agree with you. I think uh, also that uh, that horizontal line looks to be in play, and, and if we get uh, something of a reversal bar on on today, then uh, yeah. oil could rally again tomorrow, couldn't it? Yeah. So that's what I'm looking at. Um, that's what is concerning me. Well, when I say concern, it doesn't worry me. <laughs> it is under my notice, right? That uh, that I'm looking for a bounce here. So that should drive the CAD with it. And the euro, when I look at the euro, uh, is coming off resistance. Maybe it, it can break back through there, of course. But it looks to me as though the euro's got um, a little bit of downside in it. Um, and look, to be fair, uh, if, if I'm absolutely frank, I'm bullish the euro, but not here. Uh, I think there's retracement, and I think the retracement can come right down to the weekly pivot. So I'm only talking intraday here. I'm not talking direction or, or trend or anything like that. I just see a, a potential trade, and that is Euro CAD short. So we're at resistance. Um, the Euro's at resistance. The CAD's at support, uh, and that's why I think this is this is a potential trade. It, look, if it goes to heaven and, and doesn't stop, then who cares? Uh, unless you're in this trade, of course, going long, then you'd care because it'd be really, really nice. Um, but I see a potential here if if this does turn around uh, for these pivots to be tested. And if I can find a way into that, that's the trade I'm looking for today. So everything else is, is really not uh, on my radar, but EuroCAD is. So that's... Yeah, I like that. Really nice. I like that. I, I think that's a, that's, a, that's quite a nice uh, deduction, isn't it? Of uh, you know finding two currencies that uh, one at support, one at resistance, um, and, uh, and and utilising that. So what you've effectively done is is looked against the dollar, right? Uh, yes, pretty much. Compared yeah, to the, it's the dollar. Yes. So um, what uh, what we're looking at here, um. Which I, I really like. We just had a little bit of a burst to the upside on the FTSE, so I'm just seeing whether it's it's going to continue uh, continue to the downside, or whether uh, we just need to sit and wait wait on this a little while. But uh, what what Jeff's done, which I think is is well worth kind of looking at, is Jeff is looking uh, on daily charts. Is that right, Jeff? Yeah, mate. For, He's looking for... on daily charts and found this uh, this resistance point uh, on the euro. 
and this is uh, this is really good detective work. So I, this is the reason I'm I'm kind of bringing this up. He's looked at this and, and seen that there's some uh, there's some resistance here on the on the euro dollar, and then brought in the dollar CAD, and seen that um, the dollar CAD uh, with the, the, the oil um, to to give me a CAD flavour as well. Yeah. Yeah, but there's also resistance here on dollar CAD uh, yep. is, is effectively the point, isn't it? So there's some resistance here on dollar CAD. So it's certainly looking at this stage. Might might be easier to see on the four-hour chart. I'm not exactly sure what your lines were, but there's some um, there's some potential resistance here on dollar CAD, and uh, and because of that, it uh, it would suggest that the uh, that the, the dollar would start to waterfall a bit away, or, or certainly ease back a little bit against the CAD. And uh, and that would strengthen the CAD and, and weaken the euro, um, and then we bring oil into play. And, and I really like this. I mean, you know, it's, it's almost kind of like a, a three chart, uh, a three chart um, uh, deduction. Yeah, uh, because I know what I'm looking for all the time, but it doesn't really set up often, and that's why yeah, I'm a little bit key. Yeah. Um, and the interesting thing about all this, and this is this is what I've got with the, uh, the with the uh, with oil. This is WTI right right on top of a um, a support line. It's a, effectively a, a break and a retest of a of a of a break line of a of an area of resistance. So hoping to find some support here. Uh, really good trend line confluence as well. Uh, that looks like we're uh, somewhere near this support, which could also boost the CAD. So. Um, looking at, uh, at Canadian dollar trades off the back of this and off the back of the fact that we uh, we do have some dollar CAD resistance would suggest that uh, looking at the CAD as a, as a potentially strong currency would be uh, would be something to do uh, when you've when you've done the, um, the, the the breakdown of all this, Jeff. Are you then looking at the the the, the half an hour charts, or are you, you still look kind of looking at the, the dailies on the, this stuff? I'll look at any chart. Any single chart that gives me an indication that it's about to go, uh, right? I'll, I'll trade it. If it's um, you know, even a half chance, uh, I'll probably go in light, and and then if it if it converts, and on the second chance, I'll go in heavy. So yeah, that's kind of the the system that I use. Really like it. So uh, looking at Euro CAD, um, we uh, we already have uh, some Euro pound in the market that uh, that Jeff is just tracking. I am tracking the FTSE. Um, so we're doing that. Uh, yeah, I'm just uh, reading uh, Christo's um, Christo's uh, messages here. So yeah, Gaddafi was moved because he was channeling the petrol dollar in the West and the US destabilized the region. You, you're absolutely right. And, and this is the thing. <clears throat> Um, the, the 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 policy that they that they follow, the the reasons that they go in is the thing that I've got a problem with. You know, the the, the ways that they go in probably should be uh, dictated for uh, the the, um, the 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 result they're trying to get is the wrong result. I think if people focused more on the uh, the the the, um, uh, the human side of it. You know, actually, kind of go in to protect the, the the people in the countries rather than doing it because of uh, the the commodities that they get out. I mean, obviously, there's got to be a certain amount of, that is of money without precedent, isn't it? I mean, you you have to turn the whole thought process of people who rule and uh, and make decisions. In, in yeah, countries. you have to turn their whole thought process around. And wow, what a job! And that's what I said before. Where the hell do you start? How do you get through to these morons that actually run countries? And really, what they're doing is their their um, their, their workload is pointed at the next election, and no yes, further. yes, only interested in getting to that next election. So yeah. people don't care. Um, oh, sorry, people don't seem to have a an agenda or, or be part of their agenda. And until that changes, I don't know. You, you just got. Yeah. To, does that mean? Does that mean uh, communism? Does that mean socialism? Goodness only knows. You know, communism's doomed to fail. It's never worked before. Um, I, I don't know, mate. I, I really don't know the answer. But gee, it would be nice. Uh, and the power of one, I suppose, is where we need to look. We all need to. We all need to just start and um, and point ourselves in the right direction. I guess.
Yeah, well, but this this is the thing. I mean, when it comes down to it, uh, you know, who knows uh, which works because we are in a different era, and and I think when it came down to you know, if we if we think about the the kind of different um, aspects of um, uh, of evolution, then capitalism obviously was able to work for a certain amount of time because the commodities at that point seem to be finite but things have changed now sorry because it seems to be infinite but things have changed now and the only thing that is uh, is finite is uh, is intellectual property so if they if they you know as they move towards technology then um you know and the, and the technological revolution then maybe things can uh, change for the better but I kind of I always think of Singapore in, in this kind of scenario because to my knowledge Singapore has never invaded anybody to uh to, uh, to to benefit their economy, that they've done it purely off the back of uh, of, of sound economics, and I think that the the West, you know, and, and I have to bring it back to the UK because I, I know it the best. But I think the UK is in uh, a decent enough position now not to have to continue to um, uh, to, to use somebody else's downfall to 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 um, to, to extend its economy. So. Yeah, I mean, who knows which which form it comes into, but we certainly need a new world order because without it, I mean, forgetting the uh, the, the human suffering that uh, governments are prepared to allow to continue to go on in the world, uh, just think about um, the the uh, uh, nature's suffering and and what's going on with nature. The mm. world just eventually is just going to go forget it, forget it. You've choked us to death. You know, we we cannot sustain the human race any longer. So uh, good night, and uh, and the light will be turned off. Um, and what surprises me is is the lack of urgency uh, about all this stuff. And it takes a, a load. We had a march actually quite recently throughout the uh, the streets of London of a load of school kids that took off a day. They took 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 the day off school and marched through London in their tens of thousands uh, to um, bring the uh, climate change back into the focus of uh, of some of the leaders. Um, and uh, do you know what the government, the the the, uh, the education uh, government said that they shouldn't be taking a day off school? So <laughs> rather than sort of like you know addressing yeah. why, you know, and these weren't kids that were just just uh, truant because they uh, wanted a day off school. Yeah, these were really about the future. Yes. Yeah, yeah, they were intelli- You know, there, there was a lots of interviews done with with uh, with with uh, these kids, and they were so unbelievably comprehensive, and uh, and 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 um, and intelligent about their approach. You know, they they didn't want to take a day off school, but they are just looking at it, going, "We are going to have to inherit this," and they're worried because there's this twelve year clock that everybody's now talking about. But they're worried that they're going to inherit this, and maybe. Is that that generation that that comes and uh, and eventually sees the light, but uh, but possibly by that time it, it may well be too late. But um, I don't think that there's going to be anything left for everybody unless we all do work together. And this is what I'm saying about we're in a different era. There's far too many people on the planet now for us not to look at this as a planet and not just separate countries, um, because we have uh, we've we've already drawn the resources from each and every individual country that we have to now spill in. To, uh, to to cooperating with each other and, and I think that the uh, the sooner that's done the better uh I was kind of yeah, hoping and, and you know, would that, be the that, that doesn't need to be money mm-hmm. either, you know? it, it just needs to be um, understanding of of how to use the resources that you have and uh, there's no better example of that than um, the practice of permaculture and I'm surrounded by permaculture people, which is very much one of the reasons that I'm here in Tasmania, because permaculture actually began in Tasmania. And uh, it is a holistic view of using every single resource that you have to its utmost and recycling that. You know, it, it's right. just perma, obviously, permanent culture. And uh, I, if I could wave a magic wand then people that live in desert areas uh, could be taught permaculture how they can actually regenerate their land so that they've got productive uh, pasture etc 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 just a holistic view of of how the world should work so have a look at permaculture mate that's that's i will yeah that's that sounds that sounds like a um a fascinating uh um fascinating road uh, mm. We need to do something, mate. There's no two ways about it. I don't know. Maybe it starts here. Christo saying he can't wait for IA, uh, sorry, AI and Skynet to wipe out the problem in the world, i.e. mankind. 
Well, it is mankind, isn't it? It's not yeah, womankind. That's absolutely right. Or, yes. Oh, I'm not going, not, in, not going in. The that. women are. The women aren't doing this. Hold on a minute, Theresa May. Oh, well. um, so uh, <laughs> he says, I like fish and chips, but we are eating up all the fish in the sea. Simply unsustainable the way we are consuming everything. That that's uh, that's very true, mate. And I love fish and chips. <laughs> yeah, I might have to rethink. Um, anyway, I'm going, I'm, I'll put some links up here tomorrow. There's some nice permaculture stuff. Yeah, that'd be that'd be brilliant, mate. That'd be brilliant. You know what? I, I, you know, you, you're absolutely right, Christo. We are we are kind of bludgeoning in things, but the problem is, it's not the consumption that's the issue. It's the uh, it's the pollution um, that is the main problem because fish uh, and and other sea creatures would thrive if uh, if we just were a little bit more um, uh, mediated in in how we uh, in how we. We, we farmed um, and how we consumed and, and that's what it's, what it's really about it's not not consuming them per se it's uh, it's the rate that we consume and and, uh, and actually how how awful some of the uh, the conditions are anyway we must push off before I uh, I um, end up getting some some kind of uh, I don't know <laughs> <laughs> problem is with this this kind of line is that you, you you end up getting on a soapbox and then and then uh, you getting uh, getting kind of uh, in the realms of of extremities and, and that is something that I, I I would always try and fight against is there's one thing I don't don't really appreciate is when people get uh, people get extreme about things because there's always another side to an argument um, and uh, and we, we obviously are only a party to, to, to one side but um, I think it's it's more frustration coming out than anything else. Fair call, mate. Um, I don't think anyone here is arguing with you. I'm certainly not. Uh, we need to do something. We need to do something fairly quickly. I've got to say. We yes, to yes, we do. Now, just just to just to wrap up, anyway. Um, uh, back to, to back to trading. The uh, the FTSE 100. If anybody's in this and then they were a party to my broadcast group, then hopefully you did manage to take this trade. I am looking for around about another. 40 pips to the downside before any decisions are made. So uh, if you are looking at this trade, then I'm looking for a neckline to be created somewhere around about here. And on that neckline, I will either close the trade at profit and look for a bounce, or I will see whether there is any evidence that uh, that we are actually crashing through at first time of asking. So um, nothing to do right now. We're, we're around about, so we've had a little bit of retracement, so we're around about midway home. Um, but I'm looking for around about 40 to po possibly 50 pips more um, before anything goes on. This may well be still here tomorrow, um, and it might uh, might just uh, survive the US session because that's probably going to be what this is about now. But if uh, Theresa May and her cabinet decide something which strengthens the pound significantly in the next three hours, then we will probably see the FTSE continue to, to, uh, to ease to the downside. Um, and then it's going to be, as I say, about the U.S. session. Uh, interestingly, I actually saw the U.S. session fairly bearish uh, yesterday, which is another thing that encouraged me to, to trigger this trade because the trade war meeting had cleared and the market still didn't particularly like the outcome. So uh, that's what's making me comfortable about holding on for some more downside here. So that's uh, that's the plan right now, mate. Anyway, we'll see, see what happens uh, off the back of that. Five minute chart is looking pretty good. It's just uh, put in some uh, three uh, white crows, but it looks like that's getting swept aside again. So looks like that uh, that downside should continue here. All right, mate. Happy days. Um, I'll just quickly repeat um, my early uh, assessment on uh, EuroCAD before we disappear and give you some levels perhaps to trade that. I'm also looking uh, here at the euro. I'm waiting for this lower high, but uh, this is a very small candle. I can't trade it uh, into the daily pivot. It's only about six pip candle. It's not big enough for me. And I'd like to see that lower high happen at a resistance level as well. That would be probably in this vicinity. And if that's the case, I'll look at it. Um, it may coincide, however, with exactly the same trade that I'm looking for on EuroCAD. And I'm very, very aware of this one looking for it um, if I had absolutely giant kahunas I'd probably trade that bar but I'm whilst they're sizable <laughs> it's it's not a case of um, just trying to pick the top here it's use what you've got use the information you've got and and look for the right entry 
and the right entry for me is probably back under here and retest. If that happens, I'll, I'll trade it from here. Uh, if it doesn't, uh, then I will. And in fact, I'm probably almost ready to set my entry underneath this level here, which is 1.4974. So I think an entry around about 1.4971 or 70 uh, is probably something that I'll do in the near future. But I'm looking for a better entry up here. EuroCAD shorts. Uh, if you're in Euro Pound with me, um, what I've done is move my stop to entry and I've taken my second profit at this line here. So anything that happens from here is a bonus in terms of downside and that could be substantial. Let's hope it is. I'm not going to do anything else uh, until we get uh, where? Mm, first level, probably about 84. So there's a fair way to go here before I consider doing anything. If it hits the stops from here, it doesn't matter. Um, maybe there's another entry to be had later on. We'll see. That's me, mate. Great stuff. Love it, mate. We started the week very, very well. So uh, looking like uh, looking like a decent week one way or the other. Don't don't think uh, Jeff and I can lose from this uh, this particular point at, at the very very least. So we are we are off and running. So um, decent Tuesday. So happy happy Tuesday to everyone else. We'll be back same trade time same trade channel tomorrow and have a great uh, rest of the day guys have a great rest of the day jeff um and i'll see you in the morning buddy cheers mate bye everyone